Description I wear cap. Description I wear cap. The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co starring Vivian Vance. Such a hurry, I, I gotta find a part-time job. Oh, don't tell me your financial position is shaky again. Well, if I was a company you had stock in, I'd advise you to dump your shares. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> hey, my old boyfriend is in town. Who? Listen to this item in Betty Gillis' society column. Argyle Nelson, mystery man financier, has checked into the Danfield Hotel. Could it be another of his hush-hush million-dollar business deals? Was he really an old boyfriend of yours? Yes, he was. He had the seat right behind me in school. Just think, one of the richest men in America sat right behind one of the poorest women in America. <laughs> what a shame. You missed being a millionaire by one seat. <laughs> oh, he was the handsomest man, Lucy. He I've was? got a picture of him in my yearbook. Uh, where... Didn't I ever show you a picture of our no, guy Nelson? Never mentioned him. Oh, wait a minute. There he is. Isn't oh, he handsome? Oh, boy. He was the first boy ever to kiss me. Really? Yeah. We were at the movies. That kiss lasted all the way through the feature and the coming attractions. <laughs> wow, that was some kiss. Not really. Our braces were locked together. <laughs> Maybe you could rekindle the old fire. Why don't you call him? Oh, no. He wouldn't remember me. Besides, I hear he's got to be some sort of an eccentric. Oh? Yeah, he doesn't want to see newspaper people. He won't give out interviews or talk to reporters or anything. Sounds like a weirdo. Well, money does that sometimes. Boy, you could starve trying to find a job here in Danfield. Nothing listed, huh? Well, there's one. I could go to work tomorrow if I wanted to move to Morocco, had a thorough knowledge of thermodynamics, and was a single man under 25. <laughs> hey, here's a job. Too bad you're not qualified. I am so qualified. What is it? <laughs> Betty Gillis says that she can't take her two weeks vacation because she can't find anybody to run her society column for. That's perfect. Betty can take her vacation, and I can use her two weeks' salary to clear up all my bills. Oh, before you clear up all your bills, you better clear up your head. What do you mean by that? The only thing you know about a newspaper is how to fold it for the bottom of a garbage can. <laughs> oh, cool. If a nitwit like Betty Gillis can run a column, anybody... Oh, hello, Betty, darling. <laughs> yeah, this is Lucy Carmichael. Betty, you can start packing for that vacation. Me? No, Betty, I'm not joking. Of course I'm qualified. I was a star reporter on my school paper. Uh-huh. I'm sure I could handle it. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, Betty. Bye-bye. I mean, that's 30. <laughs> she gave me the job. I'm going to be a big newspaper woman again. Lucy. What? Were you really the star reporter on your school paper? I certainly was. They called me Claire Booth Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Foy? Yes, Calvin. Uh, here's the proof on page four. Oh, good. I'll look it over. Thank you. Good morning, Chief. I'm Lucy Carmichael, your new society editor. <laughs> you are the chief, aren't you? Chief what? 
Well, we in the, uh, in the newspaper game call the editor chief. Well, we play that game a little different. Here we call the editor Mr. Foley. Oh, one of those, huh? <laughs> Where is he? Hi, Mr. Foley. Oh, sorry. And this is Calvin. Oh, how do you do, Calvin? Happy to meet you. Have your copy in by Monday. Be sure it's double-spaced. And look out for the spelling of all names. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Foley. Yes? I'm going to need a desk, a telephone, a typewriter, a pencil, and some nice, clean paper. For what? Betty Gillis did all her work at home. Well, I, I, I don't want to work at home. I, I'd like very much to work here in case uh, someone calls in a hot news flash. A hot news flash for the society column? Well, you never can tell. All right, you can work here as long as you don't bother me. Sit at that desk over there. Thanks, Chief. I mean, Mr. Foley. <laughs> Calvin? Yes, sir. Page four is okay. You can put it to bed. Yes, sir. you're doing. Well, I wanted to stop the press as I have a hot item here. If you will notice, it wasn't necessary to stop the press since it hasn't started. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just what was the hot item that made you stop the presses? This, sir. This here? Yes, sir. Lucy Carmichael takes over post of society editor. <laughs> Lucille Carmichael, veteran news hand, has joined the illustrious staff of the Danville Tribune, subbing for two weeks for Betty Gillis, as society, uh, this is your idea of a big story? Well, it is to my friends, and I have a lot of friends. I assume that you have. Get busy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Scoop Carmichael speaking. <laughs> She's one of my leg men. She has a hot item for me. Uh, what's that, Viv? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Of course I know how to spell Bagley. B-A-G-L-E-Y. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Viv. Mr. Foley? Yes? I'll, I'll give you a proof on page two while I'm resetting page four. Fine, Calvin. Bridget Audrey Simmons. Uh. <laughs> well, anyway, sir, nobody else will have this. We've scooped every other paper in town. There are no other papers in town. <laughs> well, if there were, we would have scooped them. Sir, I go? Yes, sir? I've got an assignment for you. Oh, yes, sir. Shoot. I want you to go to Oak Street and Long Ridge Road. Oak Street and Long Ridge Road. That's right. I got it. What is it, a, an accident or a bank holdup or something? No. No? I want you to go to the drugstore and get a couple of sandwiches. Oh, well, that's an assignment? Uh, yes, it is. Two ham sandwiches on whole wheat and two coffees back. Two ham sandwiches, whole wheat, two black coffees. Yes, sir. Then hurry up, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> you cover for me, Chief, while I'm away. All right. <laughs>
Society editor this morning. Don't ask, just be grateful. <laughs> We've had the whole morning to ourselves without Brenda Starr. <laughs> You're right. Hi, Mr. Foley. I'm sorry I'm late. I hope I didn't leave you short handed. Well, we managed to get along. Good, good. I'm going to get right on my next week's column. Well, already? I, I mean, why don't you spend a couple of days at home? Don't you think you've earned a rest? Does Hedda Hopper take a rest? <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Foley, uh, could I see you for a minute? Okay, what do you know about Hedda Hopper? Hedda who? Hopper. <laughs> Society editor, shoot. Oh, hi, Audrey. How did you like the item in my column about your dinner party? Well, I thought it was kind of... Oh? You spell Simmons with two M's instead of one? Well, I can't imagine how that happened. What? I'm sorry. I can't hear a word you're saying, Audrey. The press is making such a racket. Can you speak up? Hold on a minute. Wait till I shut this thing off. Michael, I've spent three long days with you, and I have just one thing to say. What's that? You're fired. Oh, no. No, Mr. Foley, please don't fire me. I need the job. I need the money to pay all my bills. I owe the milkman, the grocer, the butcher. If you if you fire me now, you're going to bring on the biggest depression this town's ever known. I'm sorry. <laughs> please, Mr. Foley, please give me another chance. I'm... I know I'll do better. I'm sorry, Mrs. Carmichael. Audrey, I'll call you later. <laughs> Danfield Tribune. Oh? Oh. Uh, not, not, not a chance, huh? Oh. Well, okay, well, well, thanks so much for trying anyway. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Foley. Uh, goodbye. Uh, that was Argyle Nelson's secretary, and she says that he won't see you or any other reporter. No, that takes care of that. Yeah. Mr. Foley. Now what? Mr. Foley, if I get an interview with, with Argyle Nelson, will you give me my job back? Nobody gets an interview with him. I got a connection. Who is it? Reporters never reveal their source. <laughs> All right. This is Carmichael. You get that interview, and you're back on the paper. Oh, wonderful. And I'll find out what he's doing in town. Yeah. See if he's been in any big financial things about yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, any big business, any big mergers That's or anything right. like that. That's oh, right. Mr. Foley, I can kiss you for this. Please. <laughs> <laughs> A good editor never kisses his reporter. <laughs> It was nice of you to say that at Audrey Simmons' dinner party, I was radiant in red chiffon. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Viv, you want to do me a favor? Anything you say, Scoop. <laughs> Call Argyle Nelson and arrange an interview for me. Anything you say, Scoop, except that. <laughs> oh, Viv, please. Please, it's very important to me. I promised Mr. Foley I could get an interview. My job depends on it. Lucy, I can't call Argy and ask him a favor. Why not? We haven't seen each other since the orthodontist pried us apart. <laughs> well, tell him I'm a friend and I just want an off-the-record chat. Lucy, if you think he'd talk to you off the record, you're off your rocker. Oh, please, Viv. I hate to refuse, it's but I couldn't do that. It's very important to me. I just couldn't do it, Lucy. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Viv. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Argyle Nelson's room, please. Oh, the whole floor? <laughs> well, yes, I'll speak to his secretary. <laughs> Mr. Nelson? Yes? Are you expecting a Vivian Tuttle? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, will you show her in, please? Yes, surely. Thank you. Go right in. Thank you. to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you. I I'm sorry to be so difficult to see, but you have no idea how I've been hounded by the press. Oh, really? Must be terrible. Oh, it is. I once had a nosy reporter use a phony name and a disguise to get to me. No! Yes, and they all ask the same question. <laughs> what kind of question? Oh, you know, all about business. Well, you'd be bored to tears. No, I wouldn't be bored. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about business. Please sit down. Oh. Uh, I want to talk about old times. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, the good old times. Yes. Uh, well, uh, you haven't changed a bit. You have. Oh? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, for the I, better. I, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, your teeth turned out just swell. Oh, thank you. So did yours. Oh, thank you. Say, how's your overbite? Oh, fine. <laughs> how's yours? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> We sure did have fun in high school, didn't we? Oh, yes. Good old Short Bridge High. No, no, no. Short Ridge. <laughs> That's what I said. Short Ridge. Oh. Short Ridge High School. Named after George P. Short Ridge. Well-known educator. The principal was Mr. Hadley. The colors were blue and white. <laughs> you have a better memory than I do. <laughs> Trucky? Huh? <laughs> well, don't tell me you've forgotten what we used to call you. Trucky. Oh, no. Oh, my Trucky, yeah. <laughs> I remember the night we called you. <laughs> we were all doing the Big Apple, and you were so great at trucking, you know? Oh, yeah, that was me. Trucky Tuttle, yeah, trucking on down. <laughs> you remember what you called me? Oh, how could I forget it? <laughs> Wasn't that the silliest name? Yeah, the silliest. Well, nobody, nobody but you could give such a funny name. No, nobody but me. <laughs> Imagine, just because my name was Argyle, you called me Socks. Socks! <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, so much for the old times. Now, what about the new times? Uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you remember when we were cheerleaders together? Oh, sure, sure. We were out there every Saturday afternoon just cheering on those fearless fighting... Uh, blue devils. Blue devils. <laughs> uh, yeah, the fighting blue devils. Hey, yeah. do you remember the old Short Ridge locomotive? Did that go through town? <laughs> Boy, you're funny. Come on, let's do it together. Come on. Well, Vivi, I don't mind telling you because I know it won't go any further. No, sir. But one of my corporations is interested in putting in a new shopping center here in Danfield. Hooray! I mean, by George, we do need a shopping center here in Danfield. Well, we've made a few surveys. Realize. You made a survey? Yes. How many excuse surveys? Excuse me, well, Mr. Nelson. Just, two or three surveys? Excuse me, Mr. Did you look over the entire me, town? Excuse, is there any part of the town Vivi, that you were me. particularly interested in? Vivi, she wants to tell me something. Excuse me. May I yes. talk with you a moment? Privately. Oh, of course. Uh, Vivi, uh, would you mind waiting in here for a moment? It won't take very long, I'm sure. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Nelson. Isn't that Vivian Tuttle? Well, yes, it is. Well, there's a woman outside who claims she's Vivian Tuttle. <laughs> oh, no. It's probably a reporter trying to pull a fast one. Boy, they'll try anything. I'll get rid of her. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Just for a change, I'd like to put a reporter on the spot. Send her in and I'll introduce her to the real Vivian Tuttle. Yes. <laughs> Come right in. Thank you. Hi, Argy. Hello, Vivian.
Livy. It's nice to see you after all these years. Nice to see you, too. I'm afraid I've come to ask you a favor. It's for a friend. I didn't want to do it at first, but I felt like such a heel. It's so important to her. You know, that's a very interesting disguise. You look more like Vivian Tuttle than the real Vivian Tuttle. Huh? <laughs> oh, now, come on. I know you're a reporter. A reporter? Oh, no, I'm not, Archie. I'm Vivian Tuttle. Huh. Yes, I am. I can prove it. Look, look. I've got something right here in my purse. Look at that. A clasp pin from Shortridge High? I found it at the bottom of my jewelry case. So what does that prove? Look at the back of it. My initials. Uh -huh. Where did you get this? You pinned it on me at the senior prom. If you're really Vivian Tuttle, tell me the one word you said when I pinned this on you. Ouch. <laughs> Turkey! Ouch! <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. I wonder who that other woman is. What other woman? The one in there who claims she's Vivian Tuttle. Oh, good grief. You know? I have an awful feeling it's the friend I'm asking the favor for. She works on a local newspaper, and she was just desperate for an interview. Then she's a reporter. Well, uh... Look, uh, Truckee, do you mind if I teach your friend a little lesson? Do I mind? <laughs> she's got it coming. Truckee, would you mind waiting you out here do, in the huh? reception room? What are you going to do to her? Well, you just keep your ear glued you to this door. let her have it. Let I her sure have will. it. Sir, huh? <laughs> Oh, Vivi, I'm uh, sorry about the interruption. Oh, that's all right. I suppose it was all about big business and some merger or something. Oh, no, no. It, it was uh, one of those reporters I was telling you about. Oh. They caught one trying to sneak in here to see me. Oh. So I had him thrown out of the hotel. You had him thrown out? You ought to be glad he didn't get in to see me. What? Well, something comes over me when I'm in a room with a reporter. Really? Yeah, I just lose control completely. You do? Oh, it's a terrible thing to see. What happens? Well, I remember the last one. He got into the room dressed as a waiter, and then he started to ask some suspicious questions. And that's when I started getting suspicious as to who he really was. Oh, really? So I grabbed him by the throat. Yeah. And I started to choke the tooth out of him. Did you really? Yes, and then everything went black. And then I choked him and choked him and oh. threw him against the wall. Oh, yes, and then I threw him on the floor and I stopped him. Ah! I grabbed him by the car and I dragged him across the floor and I picked him up and run! Out the window? Well, fortunately, he landed on some other reporters. <laughs> <laughs> so I got five of them at one time. Oh, well, I, I gotta go. Oh, no, 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 I, no, don't I... go. I never get a chance to talk about old times. You know? I don't think I ever told you what you meant to me in the old days. When I was on the school baseball team, why, you never missed a game. I didn't? No. I remember I'd be out there pitching, and I'd look up, and I'd see you in the stands, and I'd wave to you. Yeah? Did I wave back? Oh, you sure did. Oh. I was a loyal little rooter, wasn't I? <laughs> well, I gotta go. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. what? You're an imposter. Oh, I, 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 I'm not an imposter. Yes, you are. I'm little Vivian Tunnel. Shortridge never had a baseball team. They didn't? No. You mean all day I did all that rooting for nothing? <laughs> you're a reporter. No, I'm a little Vivian Tunnel. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, I am. Cross my heart and hope to die. Uh, oh. <laughs> I can't stand reporters. So listen, listen, I'm not a reporter. I'm Vivian Tunnel. Honest I am. Don't you remember? I'm the one that, that, that named you Socks. Argyle Socks. Argyle Socks Nelson. Remember the <laughs> one? Yeah. You sort of beat me to it. Boy, I haven't had such a laugh in ages. Well, I'm glad you're laughing. You scared me to death. Well, you had it coming after that stunt, you I fell. was only trying to keep my job. Don't worry, I'll give you the interview. What? I'll give you the interview. You will? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. But oh, remember, wonderful. it's only because you're such a good friend of Tucky. Oh, thank you, Socks. Oh, I sure appreciate it. I sure appreciate it. Hello, Mr. Foley. Stop the presses. Hold the front page. I got that interview you wanted. Here it is. 